Now, what a huge honor. And I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to go off script for this one. <laughs> We're in the presence of a superstar, a true superstar. We can only aspire when we say we want to grow up to be like this person. If you don't say that, your parents need to check you. <laughs> if business, if business were the Olympics, this woman would have beaten Michael Phelps and the entire U.S. women's gymnastics team and still had more medals. Of course, we're talking about Lynn Tilton. WBEC, Great Lakes applauds. WBEC, Great Lakes applauds successful women business owners, but celebrates those who are also willing to lend a helping hand to women business owners and this organization. They set and they meet the highest standards in business, and they encourage the same with other women. The great thing about Lynn Tilton is, not only has she saved and owned, or rather owns, 75 businesses. She said it was 76, but she just sold one. <laughs> she believes you can wear high heels and have high hair and still have high expectations. <laughs> she believes you can do big things, even if you're in a compact package. She is all woman and fights like a girl when it comes to sitting down at the table with men and saving jobs and families. In the past year, Barbara Walters interviewed Lynn on 2020 about her mission. Diane Sawyer profiled the work of Lynn Tilton in a Bringing America Back segment. And according to Lynn, she has dedicated her life to saving American companies and preserving American jobs, proving that making money and making the world a better place are not mutually exclusive options. Ladies and gentlemen, small package, high heels, big hair, Lynn Tilton! That was great. Oh, well, I, I, usually I love to speak, but after an introduction like that, I think I should stay silent. Um, I often say it's so important to start each day from a place of appreciation rather than expectation to be able to fight the roller coaster that is our lives. So let me just take one minute to remember my own words and start from a place of appreciation. First of all, Michelle. I would not be uh, a wee bank uh, registered for any of the 69 companies that I've registered if it had not been for Michelle, and frankly, for the big three who encouraged me to register our companies and have been amazing supporters. But this room is filled because Michelle gives so much, and as I said to her when we walked in today, you know, this is about loyalty and mutual relationships. You always bring people here because they've given you so much. And Michelle, you have given me so much, and I appreciate that. Um, I want to thank Pamela and the National Bureau um, for, for Women in Enterprise. I mean, they have made it very easy for me to get all our companies involved and have been a great supporter of me and our companies. I don't do this a million times, as Paula asked, but when uh, the women's enterprise call me, I usually try to get here because I've never met more amazing women than I have met in these forums. Uh, you know, we need to stand shoulder to shoulder and make the magic happen. Uh, and this is, this is a crowd where I hope that I can inspire and offer the aspiration that people need to know that we can dream the dream. If we can see it, we can build it. And so I am happy to be here and, and grateful for the award. I want to thank Dura for you know, allowing me the honor to lead them and for allowing me to share in their great success. Um, it is an amazing turnaround story. Uh, we went down in 2009 with many of the big automotive companies uh, we've been able to turn 
you know, our cash flow by about 160 million from the time I bought it, and I wish I could take credit for it, but you're only as good as the people around you, and that is the Dura team uh, sitting back there, and it's, you know, one of the great pleasures. <laughs> I want to thank Ford for, you know, nominating me for this, this award, and I want to thank you know, the entire automotive industry for their great support of Dura on its way back. A lot of times, uh, once someone doesn't have the financial, uh, you know, uh, bolstering that they need or the quality that they don't, you know, produce when they're out of money, uh, they're not given second chances. We've been given that second chance, and a lot of that has to do with the big three, and we're really grateful, and I think we've uh, proven that we're here to stay. And then most of all, I just want to talk to the group about what it means to have a dream and to build it and how difficult it gets at every stage. So we can talk about all the wonderful things, but we have to talk about the journey. And you need to know that it gets difficult at every level and it doesn't stop here. And what it is to own a company is that there's nothing more important than the continuity on the journey and the path that we need to take. If it looks like it's easy, it's not. Not at any stage that we're at. But it is about the passion and the belief in what we do, our loyalty to those we serve, both as our customers as well as our employees, and knowing that we're going to get through it. And that's what this group does, is there are people around you that you can talk to, that will tell you about how difficult it is. And I think we lose when we feel we can't get through it, when it feels too painful, when we think we've had enough or there's no way out. And those of us who continue, that fight for what we believe in, that have the passion to persevere, are the ones who continue to survive. So at every level, we all know the same pain. We all share the same obstacles that we need to overcome. So grab the hands of those next to you. Find you know, solace in the friendships and the relationships and support each other because this is difficult times. We can talk about the great success stories and we can talk about that things are better in this community than they were in 2009, but I'm not going to comment on the unemployment numbers, but to tell you that I really think that there are still close to 30 million Americans that are without the work that they need. And when that happens, families fall apart and there's grave troubles in our communities. And for each of us that can keep our business going and keep people employed and keep families whole, that's the light that we create in the world. So we need to continue. We need to change. We need to innovate. We need to stand together for American companies and American manufacturing. And we need to make the magic happen. Good people together make great things happen. I know that I am only as good as those who surround me. And it becomes a game of leadership, of finding a way to inspire people to achieve greatness and believe they can get there. So I am honored for this award to be a role model and a mentor, and I hope that you will continue to dream your dream and make America great. Thank you. Okay. So part of, our, part of my conversation was, I said, were you that kid? Because I know you didn't go to Harvard. You went to Yale. <laughs> but I said, were you that kid who rented your toys at five? You said, no, I was a mother who needed to feed her child. And, and just very briefly, just go back to that, because I thought that was so inspirational. You know, we're all, we're all shaped by our experiences. And my business grew out of more a spiritual mission than the drive to make money. I, at Yale, I lost my father my sophomore year in college, and though I didn't grow up with money, we certainly had a good family life, but when you lose a working parent in a family, fear sets in and, and things begin to fall apart. And then I thought because 
things were so hard that I probably should get married and have a baby. And so by, because I've done everything right, as I've said, no <laughs> obstacles. Um, by 23, I was a single mother and survival was the noblest of my causes. And so I worked hard and kept my head down to take care of my child. And one day I woke up and I had a skill set and I had some money in my pocket. And I heard my father's words, which said, you were raised to give back to the world. And so I tried to find a business model that would allow me to make a difference. So by buying companies that other people would toss away and bringing them back to life, I knew I would add value. And for, for every family I could save from the destruction I knew when my father died, I was adding a little bit of light into the world. And if each time we do something, we create a little bit of light, ultimately a bonfire is born. So let's together create that bonfire. <laughs>